Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today. I know it's been quite a while, over a month or more of since I last posted my uh, video on my channel, but I've kind of been taking a break and also not been feeling that well and also kind of not really knowing what to film. So today's video, I'm just going to be talking a little bit about how I've been doing, um, talk about maybe how my second Pfizer dose COVID vaccine went and just kind of fill you guys in on some things. So it's been a struggle lately, especially with regards to my mental health. The way that POTS is affecting me as I get a lot of adrenaline surges, which I've talked about on my channel before. And I've made videos about, which I'll try to insert up here. But um, it's kind of just, it's not linear with POTS. You know, you never know how you're going to be doing from day to day. And there will be days where I felt, you know, pretty okay. I could do some hobbies, like I love painting. So I would paint and I would do some writing um, and be a little bit more active. And I'll be like, hmm. I must be in remission you know you get that thought in your head like I'm just gonna be doing better from here on out and then you you know a few days go past go by and then all of a sudden you know you're left um, pretty debilitated and you can't really get out of bed and for me how that has manifested with this latest flare is through the adrenaline surges um, that's what I call them that's the only thing I know how to identify them as um, I will be fine and then the next minute my heart will feel really hot or my chest will feel really hot inside. Um, my body will start to shake uncontrollably. And this last time, um, one of the last times, it was a really bad episode where I just, my whole body, every inch of my body shook for over an hour. And so it's really exhausting. My heart will race a ton more than usual, um, even while lying down with my feet up. And so that fight or flight response is kicked into gear so you're made to believe you're in danger which of course feeds off of itself and you just get more anxious even though you know and in, in your logical portion of your mind that there is no um, real danger um, it's hard to tell yourself that when your body is kind of taken over so I've been dealing with a lot of that and it causes um, a lot of depression because you just feel completely um, isolated, um, out of control, uh, especially when it happens um, day in and day out. I was having a few days like that. Um, just the illness in general has caused um, a lot more depression than I have ever had um, previously in my life. And that's culminated to, of course, combined with the fact that we're um, still dealing with this pandemic. And at least for my family, we stay pretty um, isolated into ourselves, <clears throat> excuse me, other than my mother-in-law, she comes over pretty much every weekday now, especially when I'm having a really hard time. Um, when these episodes happen, I can't take care of myself, let alone my, my youngest, my son, who's not in school, he's only three. So, um, other than her and my father-in-law who comes and gets her, picks her up and stuff, we don't see a lot of anyone else. And so I know that, that I attribute a lot of the mental health struggles to being isolated and further reinforcing my already pre-existing anxiety, agoraphobia, and things like that. So I've been in my head a lot lately. And I'm sure some of you can relate to that, having a, chron a chronic illness, especially one that's more recent. You know, you're always looking for answers. You're always looking for reasons. Why do I feel this way? What can I do? And I'm starting to realize there's not always an answer. POTS is not predictable. POTS is not linear. POTS is not um, black and white. It affects one person one way, but it affects you totally differently. And that's kind of what I've been learning. Um, something else that I've been uh, struggling with to make a decision on is whether to start a beta blocker. Uh, my doctor, my POTS specialist, who knows a lot about POTS, he prescribed Pendolol, P-I-N-D-O-L-O-L, Pendolol, something like that. I'll put it on the screen. Um, if any of you have been prescribed Pendolol for your POTS, please let me know and let me know what your experiences have been. I know it's different for everyone, but it's always nice to hear, um, especially if it's a positive experience. I have extreme, I have developed 
extreme health anxiety ever since getting POTS. You know, I'm all, I've am i always been hyper aware of my body and sensations, but ever since having POTS, it's like every little feeling, it's like, what's that? You know, why am I experiencing this? And so that involves taking medications too and how they might affect me. I just overanalyze and I over-research to the point where I just freak myself out and I'm never gonna ever try it. And then I wake up the next morning, you know what, I should probably try it. And But then I go in this vicious circle of researching, even though I tell myself no more Google, I allow myself to keep Googling. Um, can you guys relate to that? Anyways, so it's a beta blocker which has um, adrenergic antagonist properties. So it will block the norepinephrine or adrenaline responses in my body, particularly, you know, those receptors that are in the heart and so he told me to when I asked him what to expect because initially he just messaged me I'm sending in a trial um, prescription of Pindalol it's a beta blocker and you're kind of left on your own to research because he didn't tell me much about it and then when I asked him you know maybe a little encouragement and what and to know kind of what to expect and all he said was um, expect a less heart palpitations and your stress response will be diminished. So that's positive, but I, I know that's not all there is to it. So um, just finding it really hard to start that. The last couple of days, uh, well actually just today really, I've tried to have a better mindset and not focus so much on my health. And that can be hard to do, but I've been trying to stay busy I painted my nails, which I haven't done in forever. I did my makeup, which I haven't been doing really. Um, doing a little bit of painting and coloring with my daughter since they're out of school right now. And just trying not to focus so inward and having a more positive attitude. And I also have done my exercises the last three days in a row, which for some might not seem like that much, but for me it is. It's hard to, for me to stay motivated. I've also been trying to eat healthier but I also realized that my body really craves and needs protein. Um, just as a suggestion for any of you, if you find yourself feeling kind of sick and you haven't eaten in a while, try eating something with protein. For me, I've found lately that that really helps. And so I'm kind of in between deciding whether or not to take the Pendolol. Part of me just wants to try to really focus on my diet, which since I've gotten POTS, I've promised myself that I would and I never have, strictly speaking. So focus on my diet, on my exercise, continue my extreme hydration, which I do every day. I don't even keep count, it's so much <laughs> um, water and liquid IV. And then I also take the Vitassium salt um, caps. So I want to focus on doing this holistically, but also I recognize that some medications can have benefit. And since my largest issue with my POTS is adrenaline surges, um, shouldn't I give the medicine a fighting chance? It's just really scary for me to take a drug that affects your heart and your blood pressure, which typically I have lower on the lower end of blood pressure. Although when I'm having the... Um, adrenaline situation my blood pressure does tend to go up a bit but when I was tested for hyperadrenergic POTS everything came back fine only I do have some qualms with how the testing was um I can't think of the word how the testing was done <laughs> it wasn't done how I feel it should have been done and according to all the textbooks and everything that I've researched. So it could have been an inaccurate reading, who knows? Try not to focus on that because I know a lot of doctors don't even differentiate between the different types of POTS and the treatments are pretty much the same. So that's where I'm at. Um, I haven't done my salt infusion since I believe June or July. I've contemplated maybe going back to it but not really sure if I will or not. Um, Oh, the Pfizer shot. So I got my second dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine like three weeks ago, I think, almost. Yeah, probably. Anyways, um, it was bad. <laughs> not like horrible, horrible, but it was pretty bad. And it's not to scare you from getting it. It's just my experience. Um, my arm was sore again like the first time, only much worse, which I didn't think it could get any worse, but it did. 
and I had flu-like symptoms, so I was very um, hot and cold. I had the shakes, um, just felt really, really bad, and also my tachycardia was worse, and my POTS symptoms were definitely exacerbated, um, but after about close to a week, I started to feel a little bit better, and I definitely don't regret getting it. I feel a lot, uh, I have a lot more peace of mind having gotten it out of the way. So that's that with the Pfizer situation. Just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. If you guys have any um, suggestions for videos that you'd like me to film, let me know. Um, oh, as far as another update, I'm still taking lorazepam because at the present time, in my current condition and state, it's the only thing that calms my central nervous system down when I'm in the middle of one of those extreme attacks. So I've not been able to completely wean off. I am still only taking like 0.75 milligrams. So I'm up a little bit from when I was tapering, but I haven't completely reinstated and taken like a ton more. But that's where I'm at with that. I'm trying not to beat myself up about it. The goal is still to come off of the lorazepam, but I am realizing that um, I can't be so stringent and strict and um, judgmental with myself with regard to that journey of coming off. So yeah. Anywho, uh, again, let me know if you have any suggestions for videos, what you'd like to see, what you'd like me to talk about, and also if you have taken Pendalol for your pot symptoms, let me know how you got on with that. Um, I haven't found too much information online about um, persons with POTS taking it how they did on it. Again, everyone is different and you can't like say, oh, because she had this reaction, then I'll have that. But there's just some type of comfort in hearing from other people, um, especially again, like I said, when it's something positive. So I try to take the positive more so than the negative with those type of things. But anywho, that's where I'm at and I'm sorry if this video was rambly or redundant or whatever but I've had a lot of brain fog um, of late and I will leave the video here I hope you guys are all staying well and staying safe and I'll see you in the next video bye